No! 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 <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Mercenary Tier 10 Heavy Tank, The Machine. Now this is a tank that is an absolutely perfectly balanced tank. It's, it's fine. This tank is fine. It's a 50B... Well, I mean, if you don't know what it is, then I'll be shocked because there's tons of them out there. It's a 50B hull with a Chieftain turret and a TVP 50-51 gun. Now, the TVP 50-51 got nerfed a long while ago. And then it got rebuffed a little bit. But it still has some nerfs to it. Now, the gun on this is the unnerfed version of the TVP before when the TVP was really good. I mix that with a really mobile 50B hull and a very, very good Chieftain turret. And this tank is is just nuts. And if you wonder what I'm going on about with this is the pre-nerf TVP gun, that is that it's got a one and a half second inch clip reload with a similar rate of fire to what it used to have. So it reloads in like 22 seconds. It drops its clip very, very quickly. Like I say, one and a half seconds for every shell. And that's different to the TVP now, which is like 28 seconds, I believe. You can get it down to about 25. And it has a 1.75 intra clip reload, which you would think that's still quite quick, right? But no, it actually feels quite slow. And you, you, do, you do notice the difference between like using the autoloader like this, where it's like... Psh, in the one and the TVP one, but that means that this is an absolutely gnarly damage output dealer because it really does put out the hurt so so quickly that tanks just can't react half the time. Now it doesn't have the best pen in the universe for a tier ten. It's only got two hundred and forty eight on its standard and two hundred and no three hundred and ten I think on the heat. It might even be three hundred. So it's not the best in the world, but it's still good enough. And quite honestly, this yeah, this tank is kind of nuts. So, on Sun River in this match, we have basically gone to the middle and done what you have to do from this side now. Which is when we took the position in the middle, we got the first shots off straight away, put all our shots into a Waffly 100 and then ran. Because they completely took the dunes in that southern area. And that meant that well, our position was just untenable. We, we, we couldn't stay there, so we had to go. And then we just sort of hung around. Now, I took the chance that there might not be something camping their base that could shoot me. And I hung around for a bit on that little ridge line there. Always prepped, turned around to just run if I had to. And from there, I managed to get quite a few nice shots into the guys on the south as they flanked my heavy tanks. But now I've decided, all right, I've got to go up north right I've got to help the north out a bit and try and get rid of these tanks over here so we helped out a little bit with the M48 120mm and then this heavy tank up north I'm pretty sure is going to die so I was like you know what I'm just going to leave him and now we've got this 257 here that we're going to try and get some shots into we just got his rear and we get one in I think that one missed two three it fires so quickly it's great this is a tank that is, is incredibly powerful and it's one that I do enjoy because it's the type of autoloader that I enjoy. Not one that I've got to hang around dropping the shells in. It's just like bang, 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 bang. I'm out of there. And that is great. So we are now moving in on their base because there might still be stuff there. And as you see, we've just got spotted, right? So that means there is definitely something in those bushes. And it's definitely spotting us. And just as we come around the corner, artillery's there. It's like, goodbye, Artie. Mm -mm. Goodbye. Shut him down. Then we're pulling back to see if we can get a shot into this 268v5. We do get a nice blind shot in. I think that did damage from the numbers in the top corner. And now I'm in full reload mode. And we've got this 268v5 in front of us. And I'm just waiting for the shells to go in so I can finish him off. Because I can finish him off in two shells. He's popping over. He bounces off my turret. He has to hit the cupola to pen me. I pop one, two, finish him off. And we're going to get the final two shells into this next 268v5. 
And now we're reloading, we're just going to pull back. And we're trying to keep ourselves below this ridge line so that he can't get a good shot into us. Because obviously, we are, I mean, we are full health at the minute, right? We can take a hit. And by the time he, we've reloaded before he would have reloaded himself. And fortunately enough for me, he shoots me in the turret, only damages my gun, I get that instantly in, and we pop the two shots into the 268v5 and finish him off. But I know there was a T57 Heavy over here, so I'm not automatically reloading, I want to get two shells into this guy, and we get one, two. That's the key with autoloaders, it always is, is you've got to know where you want to put your shots in. So when I finished off that 268v5, yeah, I could have just popped the reload instantly, and then got a full clip into that T57 Heavy, but I did see him coming this way, and I decided, you know, I'm going to pop the two shells in and then I'm going to do the reload. Now, we were getting shot there, and there it is, it's the waffle. We were lucky to bounce one, and then we got below the ridge line, so he bounced the other ones. We managed to shut him down because for some reason he drove backwards instead of forwards. And we managed to get the two of the last three into that T57 Heavy. Unfortunately, the final shell that would have killed him bounced because that's just the typical way it roll. You know, it's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? And then we spot this leopard behind us. So now we're in full reload. It's like, okay, let's just get rid of this leopard. Let's get rid of the threat to our rear. I think we've caught him out here. He's popped a shot at the other guy. And we really have caught him out. He, he hasn't got a clue. And just like that, he's dead. And now there's this T57 Heavy. And unfortunately, we rushed the shot. And it missed. But, I mean, we're full health. I know I can take a full clip off this T57 Heavy. And he won't kill me. Unless he sets me on fire. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going in. And he's just fired, he's pen one, missed one, trapped me with one, and pen me with the other. I'm like, okay, I can ram him to death. No. But we reload in time to shut him down. So we finished that game with a mammoth amount of damage. We caught, we'll come top in this, no doubt. It's one of those that you have that sort of game when you sit there going, yeah, we're definitely coming top of this, right? So we finished that game with seven kills, 7,900 damage, 2k assistance, Devastator, Ace Tanker, Top Gun, High Caliber, and yeah, the, I mean, it was the machine. The machine is a beast. It really is. And um, whenever this tank comes back for the mercenary contracts, whenever they bring back mercenary contracts, it's definitely one that you want to try and earn. It's the easiest mercenary tier 10 to earn as well, which is surprising for saying it's probably one of the best. I mean, you see, we blocked 3k damage there, and that's because we were, like, hauled down against two two six AV 5s and they couldn't deal with me. Because they just bounced off the turret. Obviously, you hit the Capola, it's just like any other Chieftain, really. You hit the Capola, you'll pen it. But when it is hauled down and you're moving and you don't hit that Capola, it's a pain in the ass to pen. But the trick is with the machine, if one is charging at you, you just aim for the tracks. Now, we got lucky in the last game against the T-57 Heavy when he shot me the first shot. Or is it the second shot? When he hit me with the second shot and he didn't actually pen and track me. We got lucky there because this is only 30mm of side armour. And this tank, if it's charging straight at you, just shoot the tracks. Shoot the tracks that are on the closest side to you when it is yellowing. Because for the most part, you will track and pen it. And you will stop it dead. And stopping the machine dead is definitely what you want to be doing. Because when it's charging, it's very difficult to stop. Because it puts out the damage into you very quickly. And as well as that, it's a heavy tank as well. So it, it rams you. It really does hurt. So this game on Pro Malinovka. Sorry, it's not Prokhorovka. Mali is a pretty damn nice game. And this I had a little while ago. And I haven't, it shows how much I played the machine. I had this game oh, probably like two weeks. Maybe three weeks ago. And then... That other game was the first time I've played it since. I don't play it all that often because it is a ridiculous tank. And there's been so much more stuff to play. And this game is definitely better than the other one. <laughs> it's just the way the machine crumbles. So we're on the hill on Mali. And as you see, we've popped two clips off and we're up to 1800 damage. Probably 2.1 because I think we had a blind shot. And we've been smashed by artillery, and we've lost a decent amount of health. It's just throwing shells in and tracking us and da splashing us over and over again. It's about 15558. And just before that final one lands, we managed to dodge it. 
But we're on the hill, so this is the strength of full-down tanks. This is where we want to be, but three artillery is not what you want to be seeing. And I'm being careful because obviously we've already been blacked by artillery. We've lost over a thousand health to one shot from it already. But we're going to put push aggressively because there's only this poor little E50 here. He seems to be all alone, so we're going to just aim to get rid of him. We're going to try and shoot the turret of the E50. Unfortunately, we don't pen it. And then we fluff a couple of the other shots. Because obviously the E50 doesn't have a very good turret. Same as the E50M. It's only like 185 effective, which is pathetic for a tier 10 and a tier 9 and it makes for easy pennings but you've got to hit the flat part and unfortunately we never hit the flat part so this is just how quick we reload ignore the bad driving because that's just me that's just how quick this tank reloads we can now get the next clip in now this guy is just sat in the open in a bad spot and it means we can drop that whole clip in luckily for me artillery isn't focusing us down and that's pretty much because of the VK and the medium there that are spotted and they're in the open. So artillery is just shooting them to bits. And that's good for me, because that means I'm not being shot, which... Hooray! So, now we're reloaded again. We're coming back for more on this 268v5. We get one in, we get two. Trying to finish him off. Three and four, and down he goes. And we're up to 4k damage. And look how much health is left. There's still a lot of tanks left. And we're up to 4k. And again, it's all about staying away from those silly artillery. Leave me alone. We keep hiding behind the rock. So that we don't get hit by them. And then we just wait for the clip to go back in again. So we can get more shots out. Now, there's this 268v5 down here that we can't quite see. And I'm just deciding what to do now. Now, the base is wide open. We've got a lot of people on the hill with me. We've got a TD and a medium and another TD down near our base. But I don't trust them. So I'm going to go back to try and help with the defense of the base. So we're going to come off the quick and safer way of coming down the hill. And we're going to get towards this little ridge line in front of us so that we can try and get some shots down range. And there's a Type 61 over there spotted. There's this IS-4, we, well we pen that one, unfortunately bounce that one, get a second one in, and we're going for the third, and the third one goes in. Now I'm quite surprised we got three out of four in that one, because the IS-4 side armour is a bit of a pain in the ass to pen, and with such low pen on the APCR of the machine at the distance we were at, they can be a right nightmare to pen. So I was quite surprised that some of those did go in, but now we're... Waiting for this second clip to go back in. And we're just using the Abbey for cover. I'm trying to spot them out as much as possible. So I'm trying to pull through these bushes to try and spot them. And as we do, we pull forward. We spot the IS-4. And I'm thinking of going for the lower plate. We do go for the lower plate. But unfortunately, we don't pen. Which, like I say, is an absolute pain in the back to pen. So we try and go for the T95E6. We get one in. And then we just wait for the reload. We pull back around here. And we're just, like I said, we're using this Abbey for cover from those guys around there. Just so that we can safely reload. And I'm watching what is happening behind me. Because my friends are progressing off the hill. And thankfully for looking that way. I noticed that this chieftain is actually, he's got, he's got his ass in the breeze. So what we're going to do is drop the clip in. Get rid of this guy. Hopefully my team over there will be fine with the push. We shut him down. And fortunately enough, with a tank like the machine, and some of the other Czech medium tanks as well, you're not waiting around for long before you're back in the game. Because we're in another reload, but with the 23 and a bit second reload, you just, you're always in with a chance of fighting. Now this T95E6 has driven into a world of pain. We drop two in. The Death Star absolutely blaps him, and we finish him off, and we're reloading again, and we're just we're just trying to stay safe. I I, you've got to use the cover to the best of your ability, so that you don't get smashed. And there's two TDs left. There's a heavy tank left. So there's the STRV. There's an IS-4 that we know is down here, and there we go. There's the IS-4. He was trying to sneak up on us. We get fortunate that we bounce him. We slap a shot on the move through his lower plate. As we were going down here we spotted the artillery so we just pulled back enough just to shoot, shoot him shutting down we'd get rid of him now there's just two tds and two artilleries now the tds just got spotted over there we knew he was over there because he bounced on us and it is the strv 
And we are just being careful not to get absolutely blapped. Now that STRV got... I think he must have got shot by artillery then because his whole health was gone in a flash. And there's just a Death Star. Now the Death Star obviously is dangerous. Will shut us down. Doesn't really need Penis to do much damage. But again, we know kind of the direction he was in because a shot was past us earlier on. And we kind of know the direction where he was. He's still in the base. So we get into these bushes here and we pop a whole clip straight through the side of that Death Star. And we're up to 8.8k damage, which is amazing. Again, I, I'm pulling back behind this ridge line in the hopes that the artillery can't hit me. Just so that the, uh, the awkward trajectory for these artillery is possibly what's going to save me. Now, unfortunately for me, the Death Star gets shut down by our TDs. And that means I'm not going to get any more damage on him. But there is two artillery. And now, no, n I know where the artillery is going to be. And that's purely because of the positioning of everybody else on the map. And that tells me the artillery is probably going to be in this corner. It's, it's the, the logical place, right? They're going to be on the ice. And just like that, we spot one. And it's like, oh, there's one. And I'm thinking about going for it. I'm thinking about jumping off of this here and going for the guy. But unfortunately, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to play safe. I'm going to try and shut this guy down. And unfortunately, the other artillery pulled out in front of my TD and got shut down. But I managed to secure the kill on the second artillery, which is always great. We did, we did God work, God's work perfectly there. So we end up with victory. A nice amount of kills in six. We get a top gun, 9.3k damage, 1300 assistance, 1500 blocks. And an absolutely great game for the machine. So Ace Tanker, Pascucci, Sniper, High Caliber, Top Gun. And yeah, this tank. This tank is top notch. It's an absolute beast. And it's well worth the grind to pick up. Now. It, it, like I said earlier on, it is the easiest tier 10 mercenaries to get. The others are quite the grind. This grind isn't actually that bad. It's pretty easy, to be honest. It doesn't take very long. And with the choice of tanks that you've got to use, it's not that, it's not that much of a grind, really. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. A great success!